Fernando. And as Fernando said, well, good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, everyone. Uh, this is uh, my pleasure again to, to host this webinar. And this is uh, in cooperation with Annex 7 of ISCAN and Annex 8. But uh, for you to know more about ISCAN, I will just give a brief introduction. ISCAN is uh, the International Smart Grid Action Network. And it's the only government, global government to government forum for smart grid. We are divided in different working groups, so what we call annexes, and we do uh, di different activities, as you can see on your right. So we have uh, drivers for uh, ex ex an examples. We have cost benefit analysis, the strategic uh, communication, uh, the power system transitions, and the ISCAN Academy. That this is. Uh, this is part of the work that we do for the ISCAN Academy. So what is ISCAN? ISCAN is uh, it's a joint uh, initiative from uh, the International Energy Agency, the Energy Technology Network, and the Clean Energy Ministerial. And is the, the idea of ISCAN is to have a, a strategic platform to support high-level government knowledge transfer and action to accelerate the deployment and the development and deployment of smart, cleaner, and of the electricity grids around the world. So ISCAN, currently we have uh, 25 members, as, as you can see on and, and this, uh, this map, from uh, all the different uh, continents. So uh, what's the, the value proposition of ISCAN? We have strategic partnerships, as as I said before, the International Energy Agency, the Clean Energy Ministerial, the World Smart Grid Forum, the Mission Innovation Actions, and also we are aiming to, to have a broad international expert network. So we have experts from around the world, global, regional, and national policy support for uh, different uh, government uh, policies, and also we, we basically do a lot of uh, knowledge sharing, technical assistance, and project uh, coordination. So how we do this? We do this through conference presentation, policy brief, technology brief, technical papers, discussion papers, case book, workshops, and webinars as this one. So with this, I give uh, the floor for uh, today's webinar on the Reflex project and guidebook presentation. Thank you very much for attending the webinar. Yes, thank you, Jose and uh, Fernando, for the introduction. Um, <clears throat> as I said, we want to um, today give you uh, a presentation on the Reflex project uh, and on the guidebook. Um, first of all, I want to uh, thank uh, the ISCAN Academy and the Leonardo Energy uh, for providing the platform and the announcement um, and the promotion of this event. Uh, furthermore, I want to uh, thank uh, the Euronet uh, Smart Energy Systems um, a trans a Transnational uh, Research Program uh, within the European Union and its member states, uh, which allowed us to provide um, these insights from um, the meta-study reflex, which uh, took uh, three years now, is at the end uh, of its of its time, and um, I was uh, I'm, I was honored and pleased to be the coordinator of this. Um, I want to give you just this brief overview of uh, what uh, you can await. Um, I will briefly talk about the Reflex project, uh, our understanding of replication uh, and flexibility, as this was the key topic um, of the project. Um, present briefly the, which kind of use cases we were talking about. I'll give you an overview of the guidebook aims and target groups, um, an, an insight on the checklist that we had, on the uh, replication concept that we developed, uh, and on two particular, uh, particular tools that we developed 
The one is the community of practice, uh, and the other one a simulation tool, the reflex box, which is then um, presented by the colleagues from IFA to you, finally, learning some recommendations. The reflex uh, project, um, reflex meaning replication concept for flexible smart grids, um, financed by Euronet, uh, has the main objectives to establish a community of practice uh, between practitioners and researchers from eight smart grid demo regions in four European countries. Um, it aims to develop a replicability concept and guidelines that is encompassing um, over technical, economic, and other uh, aspects. Um, and finally, to elaborate on this uh, reflex guidebook for the replication of technologically feasible, economically viable and user-friendly solutions for smart grids. Um, if you want to have a look at the different the demo regions that we were working with and collaborating, you can have a look at uh, the mentioned uh, website uh, of Reflex. Um, the regions involved were in Sweden, Gotland, uh, in Chile, Malmö, um, in Germany, Wüstenrode, in Switzerland, Bill Banken near Basel, and Roll near Lausanne, as well as in Austria, Salzburg, the city of Salzburg, and the two smaller cities, Hartberg and Büssing. The project partners were 50 uh, at all uh, from um, technology providers, research organizations, uh, to um, energy sector organizations. Uh, and here the important uh, and, and interesting thing in this project for us was also that we had a combination of um, like uh, companies like E.ON or Salzburg uh, Netze, which uh, are working in an unbundled uh, regime. Uh, but also from Switzerland, uh, Romand and Energy, and EBM, uh, who still, um, during the course of the project, were still uh, not bundled as the legal situation is differently in Switzerland. And we had uh, three gas uh, Stadtwerke, kind of small uh, energy utilities, still uh, bundled, Büssing, Stadtwerke, Hartberg, and in Germany, Wüstenwald. Now, which um, kind of replication, which flexibilities are we talking about? Um, smart grids and distributed energy systems have been identified as key elements of the energy transition. Many innovation and innovative solutions have been developed still with the flexibility challenge going along with the integration of renewable energy into local energy grids. Engineers widely agreed uh, and agree that technologies are at hand and many use cases are technically feasible, which has been demonstrated in many research and demonstration projects across Europe uh, under optimized framework conditions. Um, so now the question is how can those technically feasible innovative use cases, uh, which are technically the flexibility challenge, be replicated and in other locations and in other contexts. Um, as any pr practitioner can tell, simply copying solutions, which have been, for example, promoted through conferences and site visits, uh, will not work. In the reflex replicability concept, the focus is on the replication and transfer of smart grid solutions to new locations uh, in different contexts. Our concept of replication is broad, it understands replication as targeted problem-solving attempts of learning from one experiment or innovation project and transferring the successful elements of this demonstration project to another site. And the concept comprises the different distinctions made in the current literature regarding the deployment of feasible uh, socio-technical solutions, as we want to call it. Often, the main distinction is made between 
different forms of transfer of functionalities, as you can see in this slide, are uh, scaling up, or scaling uh, with a given, within a given socio-technical concept. But also more far-reaching transfer of functionalities and or upscaling strategies uh, in other socio-technical con contexts. The transfer of functionalities in those other socio-technical contexts is considered here as adaptive replication. Um, here. Um, replication in the narrow sense of this guidebook or when different forms of system transformation, institutional change are involved, uh, upscaled replication um, or transformative replication. Deployment in the same social technical con context includes different accumulation and scaling up strategies such as the rollout of new projects, um, products and services, or the expansion of pilot projects the expansion of the system. Now, um, it took quite some time in the project to have a shared understanding of what flexibility is and, and what for it is. Um, we uh, came to the conclusion that it's important to distinguish between two different kinds of flexibility. On the one side, flexibility of power, meaning uh, the system, the electricity grid or the energy system has to be at each instant of time in any location uh, follow certain rules regarding the quality of electricity, stability of local grids, and the availability of capacity. Um, at the same time, uh, there is also need for flexibility in energy logistics the optimal use of overproduction uh, of renewable energy uh, sources, the temporal and seasonal shift of decarbonization, poor decarbonization in the energy system, um, the managing of complex flows and stocks of energy, uh, and the just-in-time provision of electricity, so to say. So uh, this is uh, introducing a new uh, term, uh, energy logistics, which we uh, find uh, useful for further discussions. Um, now, coming to um, the different use cases uh, that we were working on, uh, we have developed four different use cases. Uh, they address the flexibility challenges, which either primarily deal with the, um, the flexibility of power, they will availability of quality of power at any instant of time or the flexibility in terms of um, so energy logistics, flexibility in balancing renewable energy production and use uh, over a specific period of time. Two of the use cases are related to grid management involving grid operators and active consumers. Um, that means um, business to clients, so to say, um, and two of the use cases uh, are referring to business to business uh, energy services. I come to those um, later on uh, as well. Now, a key tenet in the uh, current literature. Um, also coming from partly from uh, parallel projects at the EU level and elsewhere, uh, which has been empirically, could be empirically confirmed and specified in the Reflex project. Um, it's, um, it's the importance of social technical context dimensions um, that has to be considered as preconditions, incentive and shaping factor of the deployment processes those dimensions are uh, space and geography, technical functionality and technology, institutions and regulations, social and political practices, networks and culture, and the economic uh, dimension. In those dimensions, the following reflex uh, use case components are important. 
physical infrastructure and potential for local energy generation, uh, functionalities um, in energy systems and the key technological components and configurations, as well as digitalization, information communication technology, etc. Um, the organization um, and actor group involvement uh, is uh, key, as well as to have a mission model uh, which is also uh, going beyond uh, economic benefits um, and also important is the stakeholder constellation. Um, the business models of private and public actors uh, have to be considered and are important to look at when you um, want to replicate case uh, use cases. Um, in particular, collaborative business models are important uh, as it's not about one company to make profit, but uh, increasingly there has to be um, a lot of cooperation in these business models. Uh, the social technical context factors uh, are the spatial and geographical environment, particularly the size of replication sites. Uh, upscaling only makes sense in a certain uh, dimension um, when we talk about uh, replication uh, and uh, climate conditions are also very important. Furthermore, the relevant technological system boundaries have to be taken into account energy grid configuration and interoperability, for example. Um, with respect to institutions and regulations, uh, the EU uh, national legislation on competition and energy market regulations important. Uh, unfunding was already mentioned, energy market institutions as well as standardization. Uh, for the social political dimension, important are cultural norms, social practices of end users, uh, also sometimes referred to as uh, user behavior, as well as citizens acceptance and trust of institutions. Finally, the economic dimension is important to consider. Um, a culture of cooperation uh, um, is important as well as um, with respect to its high cost of coordination, uh, we see that it's still possible although costly. Uh, at the same time, apart from microeconomic uh, factors, macroeconomic benefits for the whole economy are important. Uh, now coming to the uh, reflex guidebook, um, uh, what, it, what it provides, it, it shall help private and public actors um, and stakeholders such as municipalities and this is new to most other uh, projects that are dealing with this topic. Municipalities are also a target group, um, local grid operators, distribution system operators as well as bundled energy utilities. Uh, and energy suppliers. And their endeavor to replicate and transfer smart solutions to their local context. Uh, the publication uh, of this book is expected uh, in more or less two months. It will be a brochure. It will be also available uh, online. Um, and the guidebook will outline four particular use cases uh, based on examples from the eight demo sites of the Reflex project. Um, and um, yeah, both target groups already uh, are both already established and new actors uh, in the energy system uh, as well as municipalities can focus on the use case they are interested in. So we will uh, help them to find the, um, the relevant information. Um, so the four uh, reflex use cases um, will be presented in part one of the guidebook. Um, the first use case, short-term voltage stabilization local electricity grid. This is based on empirical evidence from Bill Banken, um, Switzerland for load shifting and load management of the energy utility and from Salzburg. Um, particularly the village of Testendorf for short-term local low-voltage grid stabilization. Furthermore, the demo sites of the island of Gotland, Sweden, and uh, Roll, 
um, the Lausanne in Switzerland provide valuable evidence. For this, the target group are local grid operators and um, local grid owners. So it's also important to differentiate between the operators and the owners um, when looking into replication. Um, the second use case is energy management for business parks. This is based on empirical evidence from Hartberg, Austria, for optimized use of locally generated renewable energy in a business park. The target group for this is obviously business park owners and operators, uh, but also local grid operators um, collaborating with those business parks. Uh, number three is load shifting for load management of energy utilities. This is based uh, on the implementation of the smart district heating system in Malmö, um, respectively Hülle, uh, a greenfield uh, development site um, uh, close to the um, Öresund Bridge to uh, use the building stock for load management purposes as well as um, furthermore, the example of, of using is taken here uh, into account. And the target group for this are municipalities, district heating system operators, um, public or private utilities uh, in this respect. Uh, the property owners of houses as well uh, were also involved there, which is uh, quite um, interesting and quite a challenge, and uh, facility managers. Uh, the fourth uh, use case is a shared use of local low temperature resources, which is based on empirical evidence from Houston Road, Germany, um, on large community owned low temperature collector combined with heat pumps of a newly built uh, neighborhood. And here, particularly municipalities should be interested in this, as well as house owners, facility managers. Um, okay, uh, the, the guidebook uh, works um, in that way that the second part is also dealing with um, uh, different tools and we will come to that in short. Uh, in different phases uh, of developing those replication projects, different tools uh, can help to be applied. Um, the reflex uh, checklist, um, the reflex of practice, and the reflex box. Uh, for the reflex checklist, I will uh, only uh, give a few indications. Uh, you can read through it uh, when you uh, get the recording of this. Um, in the different dimensions uh, that we already discussed, uh, for example, it's important always to ask, are relevant geographic and climate conditions similar? Can the same technological components be implemented? Um, is there a profitable business case for the private and public economic actors involved? Does the use case make sense from the economic perspective for the municipality or the region, not only for businesses? Um, or um, do the same national uh, legal frameworks and sanitization rules apply, like the requirement of unbundling, tariff models, grid codes, the rules for licensing of distribution systems, um, as well as um, the energy market institutions um, regarding the room for maneuver, flexibility uh, of local ele energy utilities uh, to act. Um, okay, uh, briefly uh, to um, the community of practice. Um, the community of practice is a group of practitioners which share the same interests and challenges in specific areas. Through a moderated process of sharing information, expertise, and experiences, members learn from each other and can develop personally and professionally. To get a community going uh, and to sustain them over time, it is crucial that participants regularly meet in order to discuss shared challenges and try to find practical solutions. So um, from the demo side experiences, um, communities of practice help 
to learn from failure um, and to generate new knowledge in order to plan, um, decide, and, and co-create uh, based on, on this. Uh, why did we choose community of practice um, in our project? Um, and why we think it's important um, also for replication is that um, you don't have to make mistakes twice if you join a community of practice. You can learn from each other um, and not to learn from mistakes uh, by your own mistakes. Um, and by that, you can speed up the process of developing uh, and implementing replication projects. Um, as, we, as we experience failures, it are not communicated project uh, broadly, so uh, it needs an atmosphere of trust, and the communities of practice have provided this. Um, here, just a, a citation of a feedback that we got from uh, one of our uh, project colleagues from Julia. Um, she just sent us this message and said, I just have to say how much the Reflex project has made an impact for me, even being only, in parenthesis, knowledge sharing. It has been eye-opening and also very stimulating to work with all the smart colleagues in the project. So this was really nice for us. We had three uh, intensive community of practice uh, workshops during the time of two years. Okay, so um, now coming to the next tool uh, that we developed, I now want to hand over to Xiu Bei and Enrique from IFA. The floor is yours. Thank you, Klaus, and uh, also hello from my side. Uh, I'm Enrique Krimas from IFA. Um, I would like to present uh, to you um, the reflex box, which is beside the, um, or in addition to the to the knowledge transfer in the community of practice, a tool that we have developed in the context of the Replif project to address the challenge of replication and scalability um, with the background or with the, with the idea in mind that um, the scalability and replic replicability questions increase or bring a new aspect of, of complexity uh, which is added uh, and which cannot be simply tackled by, um, let's say, uh, classical approaches or, or, or Excel calculations in order to address um, or assess how flexibility um, will impact future energy systems. So uh, the context of and the objectives of this tool um, are that we developed a tool for uh, planning and decision makers to assess flexibility uh, of smart grid solutions, uh, which actually can increase the efficiency of uh, energy, energy systems, as uh, Klaus has mentioned before, uh, through different means, so allowing for higher uh, renewable penetration, avoiding grid reinforcement, reducing emissions. Mm, it, to do all this in a very early planning stages um, of uh, districts or of uh, urban planning projects, uh, so the reflex, uh, pro uh, have reflex box tool helps or aims to help to better understand and disseminate uh, the use of energy flexibility uh, for smart grid crop projects. This is the second uh, objective of the tool, as the concept of flexibility is sometimes a very um, difficult, I would say, or not, mm, not easy to understand. Um, and. Uh, the added value of flexibility, I would say, is not always obvious to decision makers. So um, to tackle this challenge, we developed a multi-method modeling tool, which is mainly um, agent-based uh, system dynamics, a bottom-up approach in which uh, we assess flexibility at the household and the building level and uh, scale this up um, to higher levels. We address buildings in uh, the middle European area and uh, the scale up uh, allows us to go at different representative uh, scales and locations. So um, the setup of our uh, building model uh, represents uh, flexibility inherently. So uh, we have a demand in, uh, in energy which is static uh, typically, uh, both in electricity and in heat, which we can see here on this uh, slide. 
uh, at this place. In this place, and we have our connection to the grid, of course, uh, we add flexibility levers in the system through uh, PV panels uh, coupled to a battery system and through power to heat devices which are coupled to uh, heat storages which allow, for example, for load shifting. So uh, we can already see here that flexible energy and its availability is dynamic in time, depends on many different factors of this dynamic system, uh, such as the state of charge of our storages, the uh, fluctuating solar radiation, and, uh, and so on. So actually the flexibility provided by these uh, means is what we try to uh, target with our reflex box tool, uh, which allows to identify this uh, flexible energy and um, and map it uh, and uh, quantify it. So uh, on the next slide, uh, we can see the features and boundaries of our tool. So we have worked on a predefined uh, household energy system setup that you can see in the figure, which is actually consisting in this power to heat devices and the, the batteries, uh, which uh, emerge from uh, different, uh, uh, the different demo sites that we analyzed in the Reflex project. Uh, the feature of replicability is addressed through a transfer function which is given in the tool, uh, which um, actually allows us to uh, transfer um, the results to different locations and an upscaling feature which allows us to change the number of buildings uh, and see their effect on the flexibility potential. We also can change uh, the efficiency uh, of uh, our buildings by uh, increasing, for example, the energy consumption. And uh, we have an output, actually, uh, that we have uh, worked out uh, in this project together with the partners also in the community of practice, which is uh, what we call the flexibility potential, so which is the shiftable energy in terms of, uh, uh, of, of kilowatt hours um, that can be moved to another instant in time. And uh, we express this in a more technical way, which is, uh, um, which is thought uh, for, for, for people who, who better understand, actually, um, the technical uh, aspects of our system. And we have also simplified the expression of this flexibility in terms of additional capacity to charge uh, electric vehicles without any grid reinforcement. I will explain this on the next slide, because this is an analogy that, um, that uh, helps to better understand flexibility. So in the case where we have our system without flexibility, we have a base heat and uh, uh, heat load, uh, like in this chart here. Um, if we would like to add additional uh, electric vehicles to charge, we might be going over the boundaries of our power grid. So actually, uh, we are in need of a grid reinforcement to ensure that these blue boxes, which represent the electric vehicle charging, um, can be done at any moment in time. In the case of a flexible energy system where we have flexibility, uh, we have these green boxes which are actually our uh, flexibility potential which are identified by our tool and they are the pieces of energy, let's say, the, the Tetris blocks that can be uh, shifted to other moments in time. So as you see, not all of them can be shifted, only some of them which are closely related to our flexible technologies, so to the batteries and to the heat storages. So in this case, if we would like to charge our electric vehicles, we could just move some of these green boxes to a later time and stay at the same level of maximum power that is contracted by our grid and charge two additional vehicles in this case. So. Um, this is actually the, the, the concept of representing flexibility in the, in the tool, the simplified concept. And now uh, my colleague Shubei will present a short demo of the tool, uh, which uh, will show the different uh, approaches used uh, to model this flexibility. Yes. So, so we will need the video from to be shown mm -hmm. from Fernando now, please. Okay, you can click play. So now we are on the user interface of the tool. The users have options to change the climate zones where the grid is located, building the building numbers from 0 to 100, 
energy efficiency to increase or decrease by 10%, 20%, as well as for the installations, the user could activate or deactivate the PV battery. So now we click on the run, and what you can, uh, it takes time, and now what you can see is that this each small icon is representing one building, indicating its running state of the heat pump, boiler, battery, and other energy storages. In this use case, we have 100 buildings, as you can count. Um, on the lower part, the energy, energy performance and its flexibility potential are plotted. And now we are navigated to the building level. The user can look at the performance of the building into detail, as well as potential to increase or decrease its load. And as well, the dynamic KPIs are plotted at the same time as the system is running. Um, and at the end of the simulation, KPIs including the thermal demand, including the load share and PV self-consumption rate will be presented. Moreover, how to use this quantified flexibility potential is illustrated by the additional number of uh, vehicles can be, which can be implemented on site without uh, enhancing the grid as told by Enrique. So that's, that's it. We had a short look into the tool. And now we can go back to the slides. And I will hand it over back to Enrique. Yes. Thanks. So we have uh, two examples of uh, results uh, that, uh, that we run through uh, with our tool. So uh, these are simulations that we run over uh, one year. In this case, we have made a test of adding technologies, so um, actually a comparative example of our uh, energy system setup as shown before, only with heat storages and with the power to heat devices, which are driven in a flexible way. And a second case in which additionally we activate flexibility from this battery and PV system. So we can see here that uh, through adding a battery and PV system in this case, we, add, um, we can double our flexibility potential from additional 31 electric vehicles that could be charged by only activating the flexibilities from the power to heat devices to uh, 64 electric vehicles that can be charged without increasing the, the, the grid capacity, of course, in both cases, uh, when adding this PV and battery system. Uh, in the lower term, of course, in the lower part of the, of the charts, we can see the distribution of flexibility uh, to increase and to decrease load over, uh, over different hours of the year, uh, which is um, mean quite uh, largely um, increased by the uh, addition of uh, batteries. And uh, this flexibility, of course, can also be used for different means. So for example, to integrate uh, uh, fluctuating wind power in the system or to provide system services and so on. So this is just the example that we wanted to show with, uh, with electric vehicles, which is the simplified representation of, of flexibility for decision makers, as well as, um, I'm not sure if the screen is still online because we just, okay, we're back again. So uh, this is uh, the case of, the, of, the, of, uh, of adding uh, some technologies. We have this, uh, this uh, more technical uh, flexibility potential. In the second case, we wanted to show the concept of replication throughout different locations in Europe. So uh, we can see our uh, reference site, which is in Biel in Switzerland, uh, which we saw before already with power to heat and battery devices. And we made a transfer exercise, so by using meteorological data and uh, and, uh, and inputs uh, for a site in Sweden, in Malmö, and here we can see that the difference in, um, in the flexibility potential is quite low throughout uh, Europe, which means that we can actually uh, transfer and replicate results uh, through different places in Europe without having a large impact on our flexibility potential, which here is uh, less than uh, 10%. So as um, uh, information for you. We uh, provide a demo of the tool, uh, which can be uh, run in two uh, ways. So we have an online demo version of this, which you can run in your browser just by 
clicking this link, which we will now copy in the chat. Um, and we have also a full downloadable version that you can download where you can run the simulation with more features for a full year, replicating uh, sites to different locations and also changing meteorological data. So this is a more complete version that uh, you have to download and run on your computer. And it is also available in this site. So uh, we are happy on any feedback that you can give us on this tool. Uh, we also would like to provide an, an outlook of this tool. So for the moment, this tool has been used for the middle European area. So as, as you have seen, we have mainly uh, technologies, heat pumps, uh, power to heat devices, which are used in colder climatic zones. So of course, there is the adaption possible to add technologies like uh, uh, HVAC systems or other appliances that might add uh, flex other flexibilities uh, for other locations. And also, we are performing currently more detailed studies by analyzing the technical flexibility potential, as you can see here in, shown in a carpet plot over a year, and matching this potential, for example, to other um, requirements uh, for flexibility, such as electricity uh, markets or balancing markets, and so on. So uh, we're available for any questions on this tool on the um, email address shown here. So I give the feedback to the Klaus and the good presentation. Um, yeah, thank you, Enrique and uh, Xiu Bei for this really uh, great uh, presentation of this really innovative new tool using agent-based model and other modeling. Um, now, um, wrapping up, um, we come to the last part of our um, presentations, uh, the learning and recommendations. Uh, the motto of the guidebook uh, is don't copy, co-create. Um, Arnold Schwarzenegger, after visiting Gussing, um, which is one of our demo sites, proclaimed that the whole world shall become like Gussing. Um, as he was so impressed by the many activities regarding renewable energy-based local energy system. Um, however, transferring the many interesting solutions to other locations, uh, that means replicating them in other contexts, does not mean copying or duplicating uh, a blueprint, as the statement might guess, uh, like, for example, uh, the blueprint copying or duplicating from vision. Uh, as experienced in the many discussions and interactions in workshops and site visits, throughout the reflex communicative practice events, intense cooperation collaboration is required in the innovation process, as we are dealing with complex challenges and highly integrated solutions. Thus, co-creation is the way forward to replicate the four uh, reflex use cases uh, in this guidebook that we're presenting. So uh, learnings from the reflex for replication. Um, what we identified quite early is that demo sites are based on peculiar context conditions, uh, some of which that cannot be copied are listed here. Um, public funding um, is often provided as use cases are not yet profitable. Replication projects should go towards profitability. Organizational and personal overlaps of key actors uh, are are very peculiar and cannot, can often not be uh, copied in other contexts. Um, it's also very often important to construct laboratory conditions for uh, testing technical technological features. Um, this provides, this requires financial incentives from project funding uh, for end users. Uh, which is, uh, should not be the case in a replication projects. Otherwise, you cannot test in the real world environment. Um, and um, very often or normally, in the involved end users are highly motivated, interested, and educated, which you have to find um, in, in the uh, replication case. So, uh, Compatibility and adaptable context 
conditions and dimensions uh, are important and thus require co-creation. Uh, the success factors for flexibility solutions um, that we have identified are shared visions and what we call mission models, so that mission models meaning that instead of uh, business models where it's about who pays, normally the customer, uh, the question is who benefits, and this need not be only um, the, the businesses, uh, it can also be uh, other stakeholders and actors. Learning from and with practitioners in community of practice um, really helped uh, a lot. Um, also in our case, the co-creation and unconventional cooperation is, is important and needed. Um, it should be looked at overlapping networks. There has to be an interaction between policy, economy, research. Um, many actors are involved and also uh, end users should be involved. Um, and business models are very often collaborative. Um, not only for single uh, private uh, enterprises, but have to be in a cooperative way. Um, yeah, and then finally, uh, there needs to be room for change regarding the context factors. If you can't change them, then uh, you cannot, um, it doesn't make sense to look at these use cases uh, at all. Um, now, towards uh, adaptive replication of use cases, uh, Reflex should help um, target groups to get from self-optimized, um, I'm not sure if you still can see, yes, uh, uh, get from self-optimized demo sites to uh, reproduce um, um, functionalities of good practice solutions from demo sites to replication, rollout, uh, and, and expansion from uh, our, so to say, our demo sites to other uh, replication sites that can be all over uh, Europe, the place. Uh, ultimately, this should lead to fully integrated solutions, but this is a long way uh, ahead. Um, the final recommendation uh, now is, um, which is uh, not, not in the guidebook, but in the guidebook target groups, but for policymakers are um, to establish uh, regulatory sandboxes. Uh, a first step is taken already in the set plan activities, um, which are preparing implementation um, in order to, for a new replication um, that requires them to be implemented uh, as new policy instruments. Uh, secondly, face-to-face uh, Intensive community of practice formats should be supported as much as possible. As the experiences with Reflex showed, the critical mass for such communities of practice is beyond a demo site. Uh, it becomes even more fruitful for practitioners when there is a focus on concrete hardware, software, or institutional aspects, which could be dealt with uh, as a part of the knowledge community activities of Euronet smart energy systems where you have a higher critical uh, mass of, of practitioners uh, that can share the knowledge. Last but not least, transdisciplinary research and practitioners from several actor groups should be working hand in hand for innovation in a co-creation process. For this research and innovation program um, and call, calls needs to be made ready, providing room and resources for intensive interaction between engineers on one side and researchers uh, from social science and humanities, uh, as well as uh, practitioners. Uh, so this um, summed up um, our findings, uh, and I want to thank uh, all listeners, the audience, um, for your participation and looking forward to your questions.